Hello and welcome to week three of uh, LET2150. Um, my name is Todd Hurley again. I'm your instructor for the class. Um, this week we're going to just have one chapter in the book. It's going to cover uh, some map basics, uh, GIS. So, um, you know, the reason we're doing one, um, one chapter this week is because we have a quiz on Thursday and Friday. So uh, don't forget, to, uh, remember you are, can take the quiz anytime during that uh, Thursday and Friday time period. So please um, uh, make sure that you uh, uh, get that taken. Uh, take a look at the syllabus so if you know you happen to miss that you know what uh, steps you have to take in order to contact me and to reschedule makeup. So let's go ahead and get started right into um, this week's um, chapter. Um, it is chapter five in um, uh, Police Technology by Raymond, Raymond uh, Foster. So uh, let's go ahead and hit the slides here. First of all, the assignments. Um, again, assignments are posted on Blackboard. Hope by now you understand that, but uh, this is a, a common theme in the beginning of all the slides that that uh, that I have. Um, again, you know the uh, icons that you'll see for the the particular assignments. Uh, the opposing faces uh, represents the discussion boards. Um, this week um, there are no discussion boards, so you have the week off when it comes to that. So just uh, to let you know. Um, and the reason I did that is because you have a quiz this week and wanted you to concentrate on uh, um, getting that through the material for the quiz. Uh, make sure you know where the, the material, the uh, information is for the quiz um, as well. Um, some of the learning objectives in this particular uh, chapter, we're talking about basic pa uh, parts of a map and how they're used. Uh, the theory of uh, trilateration in conjunction with uh, TDOA or time difference on arrival to determine location. Uh, how global positioning satellites operate and the difference between um, just a plain map and geogra uh, uh, geographic information systems or G GIS. Um, on the introduction here, for law enforce enforcement, uh, ge geography refers to you know maybe distance between two objects, uh, physical characteristics of those those objects, um, you know some attributes that those particular locations or, or um, may may have. They could be natural terrain, street locations, and even people. Um, GIS basics. Uh, GIS is a combination of uh, multiple things. It's it's a combination of hardware, uh, computer hardware, computer software, and data. Um, you know most people um, will interface to a geographic information system through a, a desktop or laptop computer uh, running a particular type of software that um, on their their computer whether it be a web-based interface to that software but the the biggest component to a GIS system is the data itself the geographic data that um, uh, is encompassed in that system um, the nice thing about that data is that it enables people to create visual displays of that information. You know, I think when at the first week when we talked about the style of learner, that um, uh, many of you mentioned that you're a hands-on type of person. You know, um, I also equate that with being a visual learner. You know, if you see it, you got to you know, kind of put your hands on you. You do it that way, and that's the nice thing about GIS systems. It is a way to to geographically or visually represent data. And it gives you a better feel for what what what's really going on, and maybe a little bit more uh, a better picture, um, you know, visual picture into what's going on. And we'll I'll give you an example of that actually show you some of that here um, towards the end of the uh, the lecture. Uh, GIS is a relational database designed to help store organize spatial information. Uh, that's a mouthful, but essentially what that means is it's a database that contains information about. Um, uh, spatial information or map based or um, uh, information that can either be a point, a line, or a polygon, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, GIS has used a combination of technologies to enhance the understanding of geography. So, um, again, you know, it, it may contain um, attributes that um, um, that give you more little, a more detailed information about a particular piece of of, of, of geography. Cartographic basics, so mapping basics. You know, cartography is the the, the science of map mapping. Excuse me, map making. Uh, a map is a vir virtual representation of a defined space. Um, should not be any surprise, or should not be any um, um, 
surprise there. Um, maps typically have they have an orientation to them, grid lines, latitude, longitude, uh, waypoints, or points of interest. Um, there, um, the probably the the biggest thing that that we'll look at and that is 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 evolving to geographic information systems is well, I guess not as not evolving, but is a part of geographic information system is most information is referenced to a Latin along or some sort of uh, reference system, whether it be a state plane uh, reference system or other reference systems. Um, the biggest way we, we kind of determine that and the, the process used to determine that is called trilateration. It's the foundation of, of most AVL um, systems. Uh, trilateration is very similar to triangulation. Uh, triangulation, you know, maybe used um, cell signals or, or radio RF signals to triangulate um, um, someone. Trilateration is done to the same uh, uh, same same um, principle. So let's look at this example here. If you are at, uh, 25 miles from Joe's house, um, you're somewhere um, on that circle. So if you're exactly 25 miles, you'll see that you'll, you're somewhere on that red line. Now, if we add a second point to that. So if you're 25 miles from Joe's house and also 15 miles from Bob's house, you are at um, one of those two points where these two circles overlap. So either at the top of the point or the top point or the bottom point. Now, if you add a third um, distance to that, so say so you're so far from Jane's house, we can pinpoint where you are by the intersection of all three of those circles. So that's how trilateration works. Um, global positioning satellites, um, GPS satellites, um, there are you know numerous ones in the sky. So if you've ever had a GPS device, you'll say searching for uh, satellites. The more satellites that a, a device can pick up, the more accurate it can be in terms of using that to you to, to perform the, the, the uh, arithmetic functions of trilateration to, to, to give you a determination of where you are and also to give you a, a Latin long and so that it could be plotted on a map or, or whatever. Um, global positioning satellites, there are 1970, uh, the U.S. launched 24 satellites in orbit. By 1994, uh, they were all operational. Um, the, they completed the Department of Defense uh, Navigation um, Satellite Timing and Ranging System, Navistar. Um, global positioning satellites, um, the GPS system uses trilateration, which we kind of went through there, and TD, TDOA, or time difference on arrival, to give precise location. Um, the satellites orbit the Earth, those orbits are predictable. Uh, the probable location so you know we can tell in advance kind of where those satellites are going to be and by knowing that in advance and having that predictable orbit um, information can be uh, determined from that and um, a algorithm or a mathematic equation can be run to give you the, the exact um, location um, radio waves travel at the speed of light and that's a constant speed so by measuring the time it takes a radio wave to reach a receiver, we can calculate the distance from the source of the receiver. So using those two principles, trilateration and TDOA, um, with, three, with again, you know, like in the example there, with three signals or three sources, we can use that to, to, to uh, determine a more precise location. Uh, global positioning satellites, the job um, the job of monitoring stations, um, the master control system is you know, to tracking the satellites, um, detect deviations from predictions of orbits. So they're, they're, you know, they have a, a, a system in place that monitors these GPS satellites in order to determine any drift, any kind of effect or deviation. Um, and they update that information uh, uh, every six hours. And, and here are some of the possible errors uh, in GPS systems or GPS uh, satellite systems, uh, orbital deviation. So if for whatever reason, reason you know, satellites will drift um, and that's why that almanac is updated every six hours to account for that uh, drift. Clock drift, um, correction by TDOA, uh, and then there's also atmospheric, a atmospheric conditions that can uh, affect the um, transmission um, uh, of the signals from the uh, global positioning satellites. So let's get back to GIS and talk about 
how some of that information, um, you know, GPS information, um, mapping information can be used in geographic information systems. Um, ge uh, geographic information used uh, uses um, one of two alternate methods, you know, UTM, uh, Universal uh, Transverse uh, Mercator, or state plane coordinates to reference data. Um, U UTM, um, Universal uh, Transverse Mercator, uh, divides the world into 60 zones, each zone containing six degrees, so six times 60 is 360 degrees, that gives you the whole, um, whole uh, spectrum around the globe. Uh, the location uh, of an object is measured into meters um, from one of those corners and zones and, and, um, and longitude. Um, there's also the state plane coordinate system. Um, some of the data that um, is available, commercial-based data as well as um, governmental-based data, it will be available in a state plane coordinate system. Um, that data then can you, you can um, do a projection that would map that to a Latin long as well. Um, in GIS system, the features, um, objects, um, those objects are, are of typically one of three thing, three types of data. You can either have point data, line data, or uh, polygonal data, or area data. Um, we can an analyze uh, a lot of information about a location, specific uh, information about its object itself, and also analyze information about the relationship to other features mapped in a GIS system. And so, again, after I we finish the PowerPoint slides, I'll show you where that's, uh, that that uh, becomes a little bit more relevant and, and what that means to, to say, okay, I'm looking at how this data, where this data occurred, but how is that in reference to other things? How is that in reference to schools? How is that, you know, what 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 subdivision is that occurring in or do we have more in one area is it is it near a commercial uh, district so again i will give you a little bit of information about that um there again there was uh, i mentioned there are three kinds of, of data contained in gis systems there's points lines and areas or polygons um, a G gis system is a combination of all those uh, a point um, an example of a point feature might be, you know, um, here's where the location of the police department, that would be a point. Uh, a line data might be um, a road or a segment of a road. Um, and then area data or polygonal data might be um, jurisdictions, uh, city boundary, police districts, um, historical areas, those kinds of things that are, are area or are a, a, a shape-based um, thing. The final feature or areas are polygons. Areas are defined by a continuous boundary that surrounds a certain feature. Zip code, city limits, you know, as I, as I mentioned before. A discrete site, a specific location, uh, location can be a, a park, a mall, a housing project. So what makes GIS different from traditional maps is the ability to, to add additional, additional information to uh, a feature. So, you know, I mentioned that one of the types of features is a point feature. So, say for instance, you know, the, that point data is um, a police department. Well, in that police department, you can add attribute data that might, might give you the address. It might give you the number of people that, that are located in the building, you know, uh, color, size, different things that, that, that would go along with that particular point. Same attribute data can be applied to line as well as uh, polygonal data or area data. So, you know, um, on a lot of those different features, you know, you will have subsets of, of information or tabular data that, that's associated with an actual point. Hope that makes sense. Uh, image data is a third type of data found in, in uh, maps created with GIS technology. Aerial as well as scanned uh, photography. So, um, or aerial orthophotography, um, you know, is one that's commonly used. Um, scanned photographs, um, you know, tabular data um, can be Perlie address information, um, an image date, um, uh, photograph of Perlie. So, you know, a lot of that can be uh, attached into a GIS system as well. GIS do not contain map or graphic. They create visual representations of relationship or relational databases. Um, in other words, what we're talking about is, is events entered into a GIS must be uh, geocoded or referenced somehow to the map. So typically addresses, 
um, Latin longs, accident data now, and most of the state is requiring a Latin long. So if an officer comes and fills out an accident data, one of the, the uh, items that he has to put now in is uh, Latin long data to four decimal points. So it's something that, um, um, you know, there has to be a geocoding process or a, geo, uh, a geocoded determinant of where that particular attribute um, or incident um, occurred. Um, basic street address information for GIS applications can be obtained um, from a couple different sources. There's commercial sources as well as governmental sources. Uh, data on crimes and, and specific locations is usually input by the agency. Um, in our case, you know, those are, those are, that's information that's gleaned out of, of um, all the reports that get entered, uh, entered into our, G, our uh, records management system, something that we'll talk about here in the, the coming weeks. The final part of GIS process is the application um, of GIS tools for display and analysis of the data. Pin maps, using different symbols to, for different events. And I will go over that. I, I'll uh, pull up some examples of that so you can have a better idea for that. Um, AVL. Um, you know, when we start talking about maps and stuff like that, we've, we've talked about GPS. AVL, or automatic vehicle location, um, is um, something that is used um, very commonly or, or more often now um, by most law enforcement agencies. Again, I'll give you an example. I'll actually pull up a, a live map of our agency to show you um, how we use AVL da uh, data in our dispatch center. Um, it gives the dispatchers a, a quick glance look to see you know, where an officer is, what they're doing, you know, some status stuff as well. So um, that is the, um, the slide for this week. Um, one thing, like I said, I wanted to show you a couple examples of geographic information-based systems. Um, let me hit the escape here, and I'm going to minimize the uh, PowerPoint slide. Um, the first one is, um, this is an example of what we call a, our Crime View dashboard. Um, it is a daily updated um, tool that allows us to look and see um, how information can be referenced to a geographic area. I'm going to pull up um, this particular map here. It is priority, priority calls for um, um, the last 30 days. Um, it shows you the different records. Um, we, we have different symbology here. Um, we look at the legends. You can see that the different uh, symbologies or different symbols mean different things. I can click on a particular item and it's going to tell me that that was a B&E in progress alarm at that particular address. Um, you know, so it, it allows us to look at the data that, that we've collected or that has occurred over the last um, few days and you can, or a few days, I think it's the last 30 days, and you can get a feel for where things are occurring and what, uh, um, and how they're occurring. Um, let me pop back the legend here. And the other thing that, um, you know, that it, it gives us the ability to do is to kind of ask questions about this, the, the things that are occurring here. So um, right here you can see we have the query, query builder and I'll, can, you know, can expand that or not. So if I'm, I want to look at this and I want to say, you know, I want to see, um, you know, maybe all the um, burglary um, calls that we've had, uh, and I'll just go ahead and go there, and it'll pare down the information for us. Oops, maybe I pulled down too much. Let me, um, oops, go back here and I'll actually choose instead of a burglary. Let's go with, um, let's go accident. Then you can see some of the where we you know where these accidents occurred. If I wanted a little bit more detailed information on that accident, I can get okay. This occurred at 30, 3984 Broadway. It was an auto accident. Um, a 105 is a an injury accident for us. Um, so you know it gives us the ability to ask questions about that and and see where those things are occurring, see uh, the frequency of where, of where they're occurring. Um, and you know it pared down the 300 some records you can see over here down to 23 so again it, it the a GIS system gives you the ability to have a visual representation of some of the things that are occurring there um, if I go back to the dashboard here you know we have different um, looks of these you know one of the things that um, you know um, 
we get here is you know maybe a little bit better you know a quick glance at okay here's some of the things that are occurring you know some of the, the numbers of those things you know we saw that there were 23 accidents we can look at see um, the day of the week you know when you know if we having a, a spike during certain time frames you know more so than others we can look at that we can also look at the, the time of day so we know that you know later in the evening you know we, we tend to have our more occurrences of those types of incidents then we can also look at the tabular uh, data that that is behind all this so you know again your geographic or a visual representation of the data to me is a lot more handy than just uh, you know the tabular chart and then we can also get a temporal grid and and what that is is a combination of day of the week and the time and um, frequency and then that gives you a feel for you know the the brighter the color um, the hotter the color, the, you know, the more frequent the, the occurrence there. So this is one system that we use, um, we've, we've rolled out, and it gives the different people that are looking at information the ability to look at information in different ways and try to determine how, one, they might take this strategic data or, or this data this, uh, and make strategic decisions based on that manpower. Um, maybe we change how we patrol in certain areas. So the, the crime analysis piece of this or the, uh, uh, using GIS systems is really important with, with that respect. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was also a, a quick look. Again, this is, you know, we were talking about AVL. Right now, this is a live snapshot of, of uh, the calls that we have uh, going on in in our city, um, let me kind of scroll down here a little bit. Um, this um, display will show um, um, you know pull back up here just a little bit. The bottom is the actual list. Get back there. We go. Um, and up to the top. But this is the, um, uh, again, geography of our, our city. You can see that there are, uh, what, five different um, green arrows there with um, number, uh, unit IDs next to them. B65 is, you know, Officer 65, Badge 65, Badge 28, um, S8 is, is, would be Sergeant 8. Um, and then there's one there that doesn't have the unit ID in it. But then we also have calls in there. So you, if we look at this screen long enough, you'll see that... Um, there are icons in here for cars and that, but you'll see that those are um, the arrows indicate the direction of travel of, the, of that particular unit. Um, then there's also some calls in here. We can look at um, this call right here. It's uh, 9450 is the last four digits of that call number. It's a 23Z. It's a school zone. Officer 28 is there and he's on scene, so it's a status. So again, AVL, um, you know, information or AVL uh, based data is. Is important for, and this screen actually uh, is displayed on a, a large LCD panel in the front of the uh, CIC so supervisor dispatchers can look up and, uh, and it's it's uh, it's constantly being displayed and it's a it's a view of that particular um, AVL uh, data again we take GPS system or GPS data that's uh, fed back from the cars uh, associate that with our CAD or our dispatching information and it gives us kind of a screenshot of, of what officers are doing and where they're at. So again, kind of a real application of GIS and mapping data and AVL data to kind of wrap it into one so you can see um, an application of that. Um, also, that sh what shows up on here is when we get 911 calls, whether they be wireless or wired calls, um, that, that information will show up here. Um, in the next week or two I'll, I'll put up an example of uh, cellular um, technology and how passing 911 um, or GPS Latin long data with your 911 call and how important that is so um, I hope that has made some sense um, remember again this week is quiz week so don't forget about that um, quiz Thursday and Friday you can take it anytime during that so uh, shouldn't take you very long I think I give you an hour for the quiz and if it takes you longer than you know 15 20 minutes um, you know, uh, that just means you didn't do your reading and you have to dig for those answers. So make sure you reference your, 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 um, your reading so you know where that material is. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me, contact me. That information again is on Blackboard. Um, and look for, I may do a, um, a, a SI, um, a, an online chat um, the night before the, the, the quiz. Look for information on that. 
Um, that way, if you have any questions, specific questions you want to ask, um, you can come on and log on and, and ask those questions or just sit back and, and look at some of the other questions that I'll uh, pose if, if there's not a, question, a lot of questions generated. So hope you have a good week and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you.